Set in 1864, the film begins with a Danish family immigrating to America. Veterans Peter and his brother John, along with John's wife Marie and their son Creston, lead the way. Once they settle into their new home, Peter unexpectedly departs, leaving John, Marie, and Creston to manage alone. Seeking to escape past troubles, they travel by carriage with a seemingly amiable couple, Paul and Lester. However, Paul and Lester are recently released criminals with sinister motives. Marie and Creston struggle with English, so John handles communication with the strangers. Despite initial friendliness, tensions rise as Paul and Lester's true intentions become evident, turning the journey into a suspenseful ordeal of deception and survival. As the tension increases in the carriage, Paul pulls out a bottle of liquor, drinks, and offers it to Marie, who firmly declines, creating an uneasy mood. John, sensing danger, discreetly signals Marie to accept just one drink to ease the tension. Reluctantly, she agrees. The alcohol quickly affects Paul, causing him to focus on Marie in a disturbing manner. His behavior escalates as he starts touching her inappropriately. Disgusted and angry, John intervenes, demanding that Paul stop and return to his seat. The intense conflict between John, Lester, and Paul reaches a boiling point with dire consequences. After John grabs Lester's gun, trying to protect his family, the situation spirals out of control. Lester's violent reaction, taking Creston hostage with a knife to his throat, further escalates the tension. Paul's revelation that he has two guns, a chilling display of power and control, puts John in an almost impossible position. With one gun aimed at John and another at Marie, Paul's ultimatum forces John into a critical choice. Actively trying to protect his family, John surrenders his weapon. However, Paul's ruthless decision to throw John out of the coach leaves him devastated and desperate. John, injured but driven by a blend of determination and sheer desperation, chases after the buggy. The physical and emotional strain takes its toll, but his love for his family propels him forward. The harrowing chase ends with a gut-wrenching discovery. John finds his son's lifeless body on the path, a tragic consequence of the brutal encounter. This moment solidifies the stakes of their conflict, underscoring the devastating impact of violence and the lengths to which John is willing to go to try to save his family, even in the face of insurmountable odds and profound loss. Overwhelmed by grief, he collapses, clutching his son and crying uncontrollably. As he deals with his loss, his sorrow shifts into intense anger. He notices the buggy stopped in the distance. With grim determination, he grabs his gun and starts a slow, intentional walk towards it. He sees the driver's dead body on the ground. His fury growing, he sets his sights on Lester, the one responsible for this tragedy, and advances with purpose, killing the two prisoners. John's world is destroyed as he stares at Marie's lifeless body, his heart in pieces. Despite his grief, he gently lifts her onto a horse, unable to leave her behind, and begins the painful journey back home. When he arrives with her body, John's brother Peter offers for him the little comfort he can during this tragic time. Peter, understanding his sorrow, quietly assists John, knowing that words are useless in such a moment of profound loss. Meanwhile, in another part of the region, notorious mafia leader and landowner Henry Delaro learns of his brother Paul's death. Consumed by fury and sorrow, Delaro embarks on an unyielding quest for revenge, searching towns for any hint of the killer. His search brings him to the village where John lives, and he confronts the mayor, keen, demanding answers. Ignoring the mayor's claims of innocence, Delaro insists that someone in the village is responsible for his brother's death. He threatens the villagers with severe repercussions, setting a brutal deadline. Produce the killer within two hours or face his merciless vengeance. The villagers, filled with anxiety and doubt, understand the perilous situation they face, with the threat of violence looming like a dark cloud. The entire village is frozen in fear as Delaru, an intimidating figure, terrorizes the community. His simple yet brutal ultimatum, if his brother's murderer isn't surrendered, he will kill two innocent villagers. As time quickly runs out, the tension in the village becomes unbearable. The deadline of two hours given by Delaru swiftly expires, and the killer's identity remains unknown. Desperation takes hold, and the mayor, bearing the heavy responsibility of his people's lives, steps forward with two chosen sacrifices. The first sacrifice is an elderly woman, her face etched with the struggles of years gone by. Despite her frailty, she stands unwavering, 
ready to give her life to protect her fellow villagers from Delaru's rage. The second sacrifice is a young man, his legs crippled by misfortune. Despite his physical limitations, his eyes blaze with determination. Believing that his life is of little worth, he too steps forward, prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice for his community. Delaru, indifferent to their courage, coldly pulls out his gun and shoots the man in the street. Turning his gaze to the elderly woman, Delara's expression hardens. But before he can fire, she swiftly retrieves a handful of sharp, foul-smelling herbs from her clothing and hurls them into Delara's face, temporarily blinding him. Enraged, Delara manages to fire the gun. But the woman's sacrifice is not in vain as the shot goes astray. Delaru, spurred by a thirst for vengeance, marks an innocent villager as his next victim. He cruelly faults the villagers for not adhering to his demands, accusing them of sacrificing an elderly woman and a disabled man. But the village harbors a darker secret. The mayor has been clandestinely paying Delaru $88 monthly for his protection from his own brutality. With his brother's death fueling his rage, Delaru hikes the extortion to $160, a sum threatening the village's fragile economy. The villagers, rattled by the grim reality and recent deaths, find themselves at a crossroads. The killing of the elderly woman and the brave man casts a permanent shadow over their lives. As Delara's ultimatum looms, pay up or face dire repercussions, their panic deepens. Their existence teeters on a knife edge, each breath a measure of their desperation and fear. Gathering to bury Paul, the villagers must also support his widow, Madeleine, who is burning with a quiet determination for revenge. Yet, mindful of the dangers, she counsels caution, signaling for silence when whispers of retaliation stir. Simultaneously, John, gripped by a profound sorrow, buries his wife and child, each act of mournful labor a testament to his inconsolable grief and loss. With their resources dwindling, John and Peter decide to sell their possessions and leave the village. While doing this, they are discovered to be expert shooters during a chance meeting. The shopkeeper, impressed by their shooting skills, suggests they stay and help defend the village from an impending attack. Despite this, Peter warns against staying, aware that they stand little chance against Delara's forces. He suggests the shopkeeper focus on the safety of the villagers by avoiding a fight. The shopkeeper, however, accuses Peter of cowardice, creating a tense atmosphere in the once peaceful village. John then goes to the mayor to sell a piece of land he bought six years ago for $140, but is dismayed to find out it's only worth $150 now. He shares his desperate situation with the mayor, who reveals that the villagers are struggling financially, paying $160 a month. John is confused until the mayor explains the impact of Delara's brother's murder. Realizing the gravity of the situation, John understands that his own difficulties are likely to get worse. Accepting the offered amount, the mayor advises John to hide the money in his shoes to avoid being robbed. John follows this advice conceals the money, and gets ready to leave the village. As John and Peter get ready to leave, the town sheriff and minister, Malik, stops them. John ends up in a jail cell where Malik coldly tells him that his death could buy the town more time. Malik attempts to alert the authorities about Delara's crimes. However, Malik is unaware that Delaru is collaborating with the standard Atlantic Oil Company to take over Black Creek and its resource-rich lands. Mayor Keene is aiding Delaru in this scheme. It's cruelly revealed that Delara's mute, widowed sister-in-law, Madeleine, who handles his finances, suffers severe abuse from him. The next day, John is taken to Delara's base, an abandoned town, where he is tied to a post and left in the scorching sun. Meanwhile, Peter escapes from jail and attacks Delara's men, killing several. He rescues John, and they both make a frantic escape, chased by Delaru and his remaining men. Seeing John's weakened state, Peter distracts their pursuers, ultimately sacrificing himself. With Delara's gang preoccupied, Madeleine grabs the chance to steal Delara's stolen money and runs for a passing train. She is caught by the train, but Delara orders his men to assault her before planning to kill her. Meanwhile, a battered and exhausted John roams the countryside in search of shelter and food. He comes across Mrs. Whistler's humble home, whose husband had suffered under Delara's brutality. Finding comfort there, he starts to heal while Mrs. Whistler and her kids escape to safety. Upon returning to town, John confronts Mayor Keene, seeking revenge for his betrayal. Equipped with weapons from the local store, 
he reluctantly partners with Wojciech, the young storekeeper who seeks vengeance against Aleru for his grandmother's death. Employing clever strategies and ambushes, John methodically takes down Dalera's men one by one. Tragically, Wojciech is killed in the crossfire, accidentally setting the hotel imprisoning Madeleine on fire. The chaos enables her to escape. In a final confrontation, Dalaru severely injures John. As Dalaru is about to deliver a fatal blow, Madeleine, driven by her suffering and determination, shoots him twice. John finishes him with a fatal headshot. As victory seems close, Sheriff Malik and his deputies arrive, thanking John for his bravery against Dalera's terror. However, when they attempt to arrest Madeleine, John intervenes, insisting she will go with him. The two leave the town, now free from Dalera's rule. Although the town is freed, the area is eventually taken over by a profit-hungry oil corporation, casting a bittersweet shadow over a story filled with sacrifice, justice, and the harsh realities of survival. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.